Hi everyone, welcome. I am going to begin by showing you how I make the background. This is going to be a traditional pour painting in a swipe format. As you can see, I've already painted my 12 by 12 canvas. It is painted with Artist Loft Metallic Yellow. Maybe a bold choice, but I am going to be using with silicone today. So I want to make sure that I have a color that is a background so no white is showing through and I have these massive sides one and a half inches professional canvas so I want to make sure that they are covered as you can see I have a rainbow of colors here today quite a few this one is going to be a fun bright background and I'm going to be doing a swipe my swipe color today is basically just Liquitex Basics Fluid Acrylic Light Blue Violet. It's just going to be in another container. It's mixed with a little bit of extra Floetrol. And I'm just going to get my colors down in a stripe fashion, alternating my colors, and then I'm going to be doing my swipe. So you can watch what I do with my background, even though it is not my main event today. I did want to show you how I made it. There is one more step I do to my swipe and that is to use a piece of string. And I'm dipping that in silicone oil or treadmill oil or dimethicone. And I'm putting it in a little cup. I'm just putting my string down in there and making sure I get most of it back off. And then I'm laying it down on my wet paint. Now, this will just cause the paint to move away and give me a little bit more interest. I know that this is going to be a sky background because I know what I'm going to put on it. I know I'm going to put a bird on it. So I'm just adding a little bit more interest and adding some wispies in there. And part of this was kind of just an experiment, but it worked out fine and it's kind of fun just to add a little more interest with the silicone. Here is our background. It's been about 24 hours. It is completely dry. I just set it off to the side and it pretty much dried exactly like it looked yesterday. So that's great. Now I'm going to be doing the acrylic skin part of this. And if you don't know what acrylic skins are, I will show you right now by moving this out of the way. I let this dry where I did the painting. And these are skins. Now these may not be the skins I'm using, but these are skins and this is leftover pour paint. If you're a pour painter you're used to this, you can just peel your skins right on up. And I'm not gonna completely peel this one up, but I will go ahead and pull a piece off. And this is a skin. So this is what I'm going to be using to make my bird design today. So you can see how beautiful they can actually be. And now let's get to our design. I'm going to start by doing an outline of my bird that I'm going to make in acrylic skins just so I kind of have the placement of where it's going to be. So I am using an extra fine tip Artistra white marker and it's an acrylic paint marker so I can remove it if I want to. So I'm just going to use this so that I can see where my skins go and what I'm using is just a cutout of a bird. You can draw this directly on the canvas but I'm just going to use this outline because I already have it from something else 
and it's just going to give me an idea of where my bird is. It does not need to be exact. It doesn't even have to be particularly neat because I'm more than likely going to go over the edges with my skins. So you won't see it. Once my bird is drawn out, I also go ahead and outline something for my bird to sit on. I need a limb or something for him to sit on as he stares out into this beautiful, otherworldly, colorful sky. So I'm just going to get that outline too. That way I can fill in with my skins and know exactly where they need to go. Now I'm gonna do an optional step and that is to take my gray pour paint and I'm going to put it on the breast of the bird. That's so my colors do not shine through when I put the feathers down because I usually put lots of little individual feathers down and I've just learned it's better to be safe than sorry. So all I'm gonna do is fill in some paint here. You can use a brush or for me, I just use some pour paint that I have hanging around and that just uh, helps me out in the long run. But it's definitely not absolutely necessary. While this is drying, I can actually work on another part of my bird. And as you can see here in my little bucket, this is what I'm gonna be pulling from, is a bucket full of leftover pieces of skins from different projects. So these are not the big, huge skins that I am known for making. These are all kinds of little pieces of skins, and these are going to make up my birds. So while this is drying, I am going to be cutting some pieces and getting ready to do my tail. So what I do for something like the tail, I'm gonna want something that's a little bit darker for the underneath and the tail part of my bird. That's just going to give a little bit more contrast. So I am gonna pull some darker pieces, but I also have to be cognizant of the kind of color that I'm gonna want on my bird. This one may be a little bit more colorful than I've done in the past. So I think I'm gonna be using these for the underside. I have to see all the different skins that I have. So I'm going to be cutting some strips to do the tail feathers. These do not need to be perfect and they're still on a paper backing so that way they don't stick together. But I'm going to be using these to make my tail part of my bird. You can see it's going to fit in pretty nicely with the colors that I have here. Now that I have some pieces cut, I'm going to be focusing on the rear of the bird at the tail and I am going to be treating this like sculpture. So these are not going to be flat skins. I'm just taking the back off here, but these are not going to be flat skins. Each one is going to be handled a different way. For example, the tail is going to be folded so that they fan out just like feathers do. They are all layered on top of each other. I'm going to be layering my feathers. For the tail, it's gonna be longer pieces, and as I move up the bird, it's gonna be smaller pieces. Now, I do cut the ends off of some of these just to make sure that they're the right shape of a bird's feather. I've worked with birds for many, many years, like actually worked with birds, so I'm really familiar with their anatomy and how their feathers work. So I'm going to be laying each piece. That's every single piece has to be laid differently. Now, as you see here, I am laying out my first skin, which is always the hardest. The first is always the hardest, and I am bending it around the lines. So I'm just kind of dry fitting it in because once you get that first piece in, then you can build and build and build. And like I said, I treat this like sculpture. So this is more sculptural and three-dimensional versus just being two-dimensional because it very much is raised when you see this done. So I'm going to be laying my pieces down. I'm going to be doing this as a time lapse because it takes hours and hours and hours just to lay each piece down. Now, when I'm ready to affix this, I am using diamond glaze, water-based dimensional adhesive, and this is just in a little squeeze bottle that you see here, but it is indeed diamond glaze, which I use for many, many projects, and it works absolutely fine here. It will break down your skins a little bit if you overwork them, but in general, it works pretty well. So let's get started, and I may break in a little bit along the way to talk about what I'm doing, but this is going to move pretty quickly uh, with the time lapse so that you can see it. So let's get to work.
Okay, guys, here it is. Now, this is a labor of love for me. I love doing these. I just don't often show things like this that I do because they take so long and it is so much filming and editing. But this is painting with skins and this is what it looks like. And that it's a 3D thing that I absolutely love to do. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, please let me know in the comments below. What do you think about using skins to create very vibrant paintings? If you want more of this, again, let me know. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye now.